guys, welcome back to Empower In. My name is Caroline Porter Thomas. Thank you so much for watching. So in this video, I wanted to go over a disease process that you will see in nursing school and you will also most likely encounter as a nurse, and that is aortic aneurysm. If you are just starting out your journey as a nursing student or maybe pre doing your prerequisites, I want to encourage you to watch the video and just listen to the words. What I think is so extraordinary about our brains is that even if you don't fully understand all of the words that I'm saying, by the time you do get to this portion of your nursing school classes, you will be able to grasp the concepts much easier. So without any further ado, let's get started. First, we must understand what aortic aneurysm means. So let's break down the word. The first part of the word aortic refers to the aorta, which is the largest artery in the body. The next part of the word aneurysm describes a disease process where there is an abnormal widening or stretching of a portion of the artery. This is due to weakening of the blood vessels. This can also be caused by a number of different reasons, including arthrosclerosis. This is the most common cause. Arthrosclerosis means hardening of the arteries. Normally, the aortic wall is very elastic. Other causes include family history, trauma, hypertension, congenital disorders, inflammatory disorders. There are many different types of aneurysms depending on the location and also the shape of the aneurysm with different signs and symptoms associated with each. One is ascending aneurysm, which is also known as thoracic aneurysm. Signs and symptoms of this type of aneurysm include bradycardia, blood pressure differences between the left and right arm, jugular vein distension, and murmur. Also, pericardial friction rub. Another type is abdominal aneurysm. There are usually no symptoms associated with this type of aneurysm. However, when you listen to the patient's heart, you may hear a brewing. Diagnostic tests include echocardiography or cardiac echo, which is an ultrasound that can show the aneurysm and also its size. Other exams include an anterior, posterior, and lateral abdominal x-ray, transesophageal echocardiography, also known as a TEE, a CT scan, and aortograph, which can show the exact location, and a complete blood count, which will most likely show a decreased hemoglobin level. Treatments vary depending on the location and type of aneurysm. A dissecting aortic aneurysm requires emergency surgery. A dissection is when the blood flows between the layers of the wall of the aorta, causing a decreased flow of blood to the vital organs. Other treatments include antihypertensives to lower the blood pressure, beta blockers to slow the heart rate, oxygen for respiratory distress, IV fluids for blood pressure stabilization, and possibly blood transfusions. Remember, in nursing school, the most important thing to do is review as many questions as possible. So let's go over some questions that I made up for you guys. Question number one. A newly admitted client has a blood pressure reading of 172 over 77 on the right arm. What should the nurse's next step be? A, ask if the patient took her antihypertensives this morning. B, notify the physician immediately of the client's elevated blood pressure. C, recheck the pressure on the left arm, or D, get a comprehensive list of the patient's past medical history and family history. The key word in this question is next. With NCLEX questions, every single word matters, and each word has to be read very carefully. Here's a test-taking tip. Read the question to yourself and think about what the possible answer could be without reading the potential answers below. Then reread the question and see if the answer still makes sense. Hopefully when you do look at the possible answer selections, you will see the answer you thought of below. So let's take a look at these. Answer A. It is important that we know if the client took their blood pressure medications, but the question is asking what our next step would be, and this is not the best answer. Option B says to notify the physician immediately of the patient's elevated blood pressure. One thing that you will learn from repeating question after question is that it is the nurse's responsibility to reassess each condition prior to making contact with the physician. So it is not good to report only one blood pressure finding to the physician. Option C is the best answer for a number of different reasons. One, you can recheck the blood pressure and see if it is also elevated on the left arm. Doing this will also allow you to see if there is a blood pressure difference, which could be a sign and symptom of an aneurysm. Finally, option D. It is important, but it is not the most important next step. Here's another question. The nurse is caring for a 56-year-old male client with a history of hypertension for the last 25 years. The nurse knows that A, the most common age group and sex at risk for an ascending aortic aneurysm is a history of hypertension and age less than 60. B, that a history of blood pressure is not a major risk factor 
of an aortic aneurysm, C, the only sign of an aneurysm is elevated blood pressure, or D, the risk of an elevated blood pressure over a long period of time can increase the elasticity of the aortic wall. So let's analyze these. A is a correct statement because the most common risk factor for ascending aortic aneurysm are men who are less than 60 years of age with a history of hypertension. B is not correct at all because elevated blood pressure is a major risk factor with an aneurysm. C says the exact opposite, that it is the only sign of an aneurysm, and since there are many signs, this cannot be true. And finally, D. The risk of elevated blood pressure over a long period of time does not increase the elasticity of the aortic wall. It decreases the elasticity. So here the only answer we have is A. Last question. The nurse is caring for a client immediately following a transesophageal echocardiography. The nurse knows that he must A. Assess the client's groin for bleeding. B. Have the client lie fat for at least four hours following the procedure. C, assess the client's gag reflex, or D, assess the client's circulation in the lower extremities. This question I think is pretty confusing because unless you know exactly what a transesophageal echocardiography is, you could get these confused. One other diagnostic exam for an aneurysm is aortography, which is an invasive procedure. In this procedure, an interventional cardiologist enters into the groin and injects contrast while x-ray images are taken to locate the aneurysm. In this question, answers A, B, and D would apply to this procedure. So the answers in this question are meant to confuse you. However, the client underwent a transesophageal echocardiography, which is not an aortography. During a transesophageal echocardiography, the client will have conscious sedation given and also be given a local anesthetic spray to eliminate the gag reflex. Therefore, it is important for the nurse to assess the client's gag reflex. So you can see how much you learn from reviewing NCLEX questions. The best place to find NCLEX questions like these is a NCLEX review book. I'm going to post a link to NCLEX review books that I use and recommend below. All right guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. And also, if you wanna see more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel. You can subscribe by clicking the button right down here. Thank you so much again for watching and I cannot wait to see you again soon. I love you, bye. A lot of times they'll make a disease process that you'll probably see in Question number one. Next question. Next question. Next question. Last question. One more question.